has been a lot of talk in the industry about Stage 5 recently and what it means for equipment manufacturers. I've got the pleasure of being joined by Duncan Riding, who is Senior Technical Steward at Perkins. Welcome, Duncan. Hi, Jay. He'll talk us through the latest emission standards. So firstly, could you just describe what technology changes will Stage 5 drive? So I think in terms of technologies, um, they are going to be very similar to what we've already got uh, today in production, um, but they will uh, be used in different engines in terms of within the power engine. So um, DPFs, diesel particulate filters, are the major change from 19 to 560 kilowatts, where uh, additional controls are required for particulates. So that technology is a requirement for stage five, where in certain elements it's not required in other territories. Depending upon the engines, uh, less than 19 kilowatts is uh, a simple diesel engine as it is today, but the biggest change for anybody is 19 to 37 kilowatts, where an engine will go from a simple diesel engine to electronic common rail, turbocharging, and DOC and DPF strategies. 37 to 56 is the addition of the DPF, and above 56, very, very similar to what we're doing today. It's, it's um, very similar technology to what's in production at the moment. What does a DPF do? So when we burn hydrocarbon fuels, um, we break up the hydrogen and carbon. Hydrogen combines with oxygen to give me water, and the carbon combines with oxygen to give me CO2. That's perfect combustion. If I release the carbon, but I don't actually combine it with oxygen, I get visible smoke. So that's what comes out of the tailpipe. So a diesel particulate filter is what it sounds like. It's a filter of the particles that come from burning diesel fuel. So it has um, the technologies required for stage five will be a wall flow diesel particulate filter. So very high filtration efficiency, like 98% plus. And on that basis, it's significantly reducing the amount of particulate that would otherwise come out of the tailpipe. What is the difference then between service and regeneration? That's a very good question. Um, Regeneration is, is effectively burning of the carbon that's in the DPF. Um, since I've filtered it out, I've got to do something with it. So what I'm going to do is to cause the carbon to burn. So I will actually oxidize the carbon and release it as CO2. Um, the service side is that that filter is also taking out of the exhaust stream uh, any other particulate matter that's come out of the engine. So we burn an amount of oil, very, very low level. But from that oil, there are other particles that also get filtered out and those particles cannot be burned, so they just build up over time. There's two potential strategies. One strategy is that you uh, size the DPF for life, so you allow it to build up and it doesn't lead to a service um, requirement. But if you have a service strategy, you might have a slightly smaller DPF, but then you're going to have to, on a regular basis, take it off the engine, clean out these other particles before you can put it back. Our strategy is that we will not have a service. So the DPFs are slightly larger, but they're DPFs for life and you don't need to service them. Sounds fascinating. For now, Duncan, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you.